Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're diving into Fluent Validation, a powerful library for validating data in .NET application. If you're still writing validation logic manually, stick around. This will change how you validate data. Let's explore Fluent Validation to simplify and streamline the process. Fluent Validation is an open source .NET library that makes validation cleaner, more readable, and highly maintainable. Instead of cluttering your models with validation attributes or writing long if-else conditions, Fluent Validation allows you to define validation rules fluently. It's clean, readable, and saves you so much time. If you're finding this content helpful, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Let's keep going. All right, so I've already set up a .NET 9 minimal API project to keep things clean and modern. Let me show you a quick example of a validation approach using app map post. This is for handling orders in our API. Here's what I've got so far. But before diving into validation, let's quickly take a look at the structure of our request model. Here's how I've defined it. You can see that the create order request includes a customer object. This customer object has two fields, a name and an email. Additionally, the request contains a total amount, an order date, and a list of items. Each item in this list includes a product name, quantity, and price. This setup keeps the structure clear and organized. To give you a better understanding, here's what a sample request might look like in JSON. Now that we understand the request structure, let's take a look at how we're currently handling validation for this API. Here's the code I've written for the order's endpoint. We're using app map post to map a post request to this endpoint. Inside, we validate the incoming create order request step by step. First, we check if the customer object is null. If it is, we add an error saying customer is required. Then, we validate the name and email fields to ensure they're not empty, adding appropriate error messages if any of these fields are missing. Next, we validate the total amount to make sure it's greater than zero. Additionally, we confirm that the order date isn't set in the future and check that the items list isn't empty, because every order should have at least one item. For each item in the items list, we validate that the product name isn't empty, the quantity is greater than zero, and the price is positive. Once all the checks are complete, we need to decide how to respond to the client, based on whether there were any validation errors. If our errors list has any entries, basically, if something didn't pass validation, we send a 400 bad request response. If there are no errors, sends a 200 OK response along with a simple message, confirming that everything looks good. This manual validation approach works, but as you can imagine, it's a bit verbose and could quickly become hard to maintain as our application grows. Each new endpoint could require similar validation logic, leading to duplicated code and clutter. So, let's refactor this using Fluent Validation to make the code more elegant and easier to manage. Before using Fluent Validation, we need to install the Fluent Validation package via NuGet. Type Fluent Validation in the search box. We're going to install the Fluent Validation Dependency Injection Extensions package, which includes everything we need to use Fluent Validation. Let's refactor the code by adding individual validators for our DTOs. First, I'll create a new folder called Validators in the project. This folder will keep all our custom validator classes. Let's start by creating a validator for the customer info record. This will ensure that the name and email fields are validated properly. We'll mark the customer info validator class as sealed. Next, we'll inherit from abstract validator and specify customer info as the generic argument. What this does is clearly tell Fluent Validation that this class is dedicated to validating the customer info record. Next, inside the constructor of the customer info validator class, we'll define the validation rules for customer info. The constructor is where we specify the logic for each field we want to validate. Rule 4 is a core method in Fluent Validation that you use to define validation rules for specific properties in your class. It's like saying, hey, for this particular property, apply these rules. In this rule, we're ensuring that the name field is not empty. Using dot not empty, we validate that the name is provided, and if it's missing, an error message will let the user know, saying, customer name is required. Now let's move on to applying a rule for the email field. Just like the name rule, we start by checking that the email field isn't empty using dot not empty. This ensures that the email is provided and not left blank. But then, we take it a step further by adding dot email address. This validates that the email follows a proper format, like example at domain.com, 
If the format doesn't match, the validation fails. If the email is invalid, they'll get the message customer email is invalid. Now that we've implemented validation for customer info using Fluent Validation, we can completely remove the manual validation code from our API. Now, moving on to the next task, let's create a validator for create order request. To save time, we'll copy the structure of the customer info validator class. We'll rename the class to create order request validator and specify create order request as the generic argument in place of customer info. Then, in the constructor, we'll define the validation rules for the fields in create order request. Move create order request validator to separate file. Now we're going to replace this manual validation with fluent validation rules. Let's start with the rule for method for the total amount property. Using dot greater than zero, we ensure that the total amount is always more than zero, preventing invalid values like zero or negative numbers. Then we add dot with message. Total amount must be greater than zero, which provides a clear and user-friendly error message if the rule fails. Now let's define the rule for the order date property. We'll ensure that the date is valid and doesn't fall in the future. This rule applies to the customer object. First, it ensures that the customer is not null, which means we can't leave this field empty. It's mandatory. Next, we can customize the error message that appears when the customer is missing. I've added a message that says, customer is required. Finally, using the setValidator method, I pass a new instance of the customer info validator. What this does is apply additional, more specific validation rules for the customer property as defined in the Customer Info Validator class. Now we can remove the validation for customer, total amount, and order date from our API. Let's implement the validator for create order item request. I start by copying the create order request validator and then make the necessary changes to fit our needs. I rename it to create order item request validator and update it to pass create order item request as the generic argument to the abstract validator. This ensures it specifically validates the properties of create order item request. Next, I write validation rules for the create order item request properties, product name, quantity, and price. I move the create order item request validator to a separate file. I am going to define a rule for each item in the items collection by using rule for each. Then, I apply the create order item request validator to validate each individual item. I do this by passing a new instance of create order item request validator to the set validator method. With the create order item request validator in place, we can now remove the manual validation for items from the API. Now, we can define a rule to validate the items collection by ensuring it is not empty. If this validation fails, a custom error message, order must contain at least one item, will be displayed. At this point, we can safely remove our last validation from the API as well. This streamlines the logic, leaving the validation responsibilities entirely to the validators we've implemented. All right, let's integrate our validators into the API. The first step is to register Fluent Validation in the Dependency Injection DI container. By doing this, the DI will be aware of our validators and automatically resolve them wherever needed. To register Fluent Validation, we typically use the addValidatorsFromAssembly method to scan and register all validators in a specific assembly. Here, we use typeoff program assembly to specify the assembly where Fluent Validation should look for validators. This ensures that all the validators defined in the same assembly as the program class are automatically registered with the DI container. Now, let's inject Fluent Validation into our endpoint by using the iValidator interface and passing create order request as the generic argument. This ensures the appropriate validator for create order request is applied automatically when handling the request, keeping validation smooth and consistent. Next, we validate the incoming request using the validator instance we injected earlier. Executes the validation logic for the request object based on the rules defined in the create order request validator. This method returns a validation result object which contains the results of the validation process. Next, we check whether the validation was successful by using the isValid property of the validation results object. If it's false, it indicates that there are validation errors. If the validation fails, the errors are transformed into a dictionary using to dictionary. In this process, each property's name becomes a key and the associated error message is set as the value. All right, let's run the application and test the validation in action.
I've prepared a sample request in the .http file. Once we sent the request, you can see we received a 400 bad request response, along with the validation errors. When we sent the request with total amount set to zero in the request body, we received total amount must be greater than zero, and customer email is missing. Let's update the request body to include both the customer email and total amount and resend it. Now that we've updated the request with valid total amount and customer email, the previous error messages regarding total amount must be greater than zero and customer email is required are no longer present. All right, let's update the product name, quantity, and price in the request body and resend request. Now in the response, all validation errors are resolved and we successfully received a 200 OK status. That means our validations are working perfectly. Fluent validation is a game changer for .NET developers. It keeps your validation logic separate, readable, and testable. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe for more .NET content, and let me know in the comments how you're using fluent validation in your projects. See you in the next video. Happy coding!